Welcome to Oak Forest United Methodist Church. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us. Go ahead and take a moment and sign your name in on comments so that way we know that you are here with us. And we look forward to getting to know you. And also, just so you know, the things that are approaching quickly is that um, Lent will soon be wrapping up. And so we'll have um, online worship through Easter. And then on Easter Sunday, you have the option of watching the video online, or you can come and join us in our parking lot. And we hope that we'll have beautiful weather, that we'll get to have a great celebration. And we'll have all sorts of activities that morning, and we'll be practicing social distancing and wearing masks and doing everything as safely as we can. And then on April 11th, we're going to be opening our sanctuary back up. We'll still be continuing the same social practices that we had in place uh, back in November when we opened shortly. And so we'll be masking and social distancing. Um, the services will be about 30 minutes long like they have been. And so we'll be looking for information about that. And we are excited that we're able to still continue. We'll have online worship. We'll just be going live on Sunday mornings from the sanctuary. And so we are glad that you have been worshiping with us. And so let us prepare our hearts as we get ready to praise God.
Let us now enter a time of prayer. Lord, we look up to you in our times of need and despair. We ask that you be with the suffering. Lord, we ask that you be with the people who are ill, people who are hungry. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We ask for you to be with those who are seeking work and those who are struggling to make it through every day. Lord, in your mercy, please receive our prayer. Lord, we, we ask for you to watch over us as we enter a new stage of some of us being vaccinated and then some of us who are still waiting. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And Lord, we give you praise and we look up to you in joy, in, in celebration for what's to come. Lord, in your mercy, please receive our prayer. And we thank you, God. And we thank you for all the things that you've done and all the things you will do for us. And so, in the name of the one who we look up to and his Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Numbers 21, 4 through 9. From Mount Or they set up by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For as there is no food and no water, we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come and fill our hearts. Allow us to receive your good news. Amen. We have entered the fun stage of why in our household. Routines that once were just routines are now questioned. Why? There's an explanation after explanation. Things like, let's brush your teeth and we'll get dressed for bed, now have the question of why attached to it. Well, we need to care for our teeth and cleaning them helps us do that. And we sleep because our bodies need rest to grow big and strong. Why? Because it matters to us, so that is why we do them. Why? Because it matters to us, and so we just need to do it. Why? There's only so much patience one can hold. So at times, explanations are short, and I know we have had to say, because I asked you to, or sometimes we turn the tables on Charlie and say, why do you think we do this? We all have experiences where we feel our patience being lost, and yet we know how it also feels to be the one complaining and then also the ones hearing the complaints. In the Old Testament story, the Israelites have lost patience yet again with the complications of being um, in the desert. And they speak out against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? They ask, for there is no food, no water, and we detest this miserable bread. 
Their complaint is the final one in a long line of moans. Moans and groans that up to this moment of the post-Egypt narrative, God answers with compassionate, long-suffering care. When the Israelites complain that their drinking water is bitter, God instructs Moses to sweeten it. When they grumble about their hunger, God provides them with manna. When they cry out in thirst, God instructs Moses to strike a rock and produce abundant water. When they despair or lack of meat, God causes flocks of quail to fly into their camp. This time though, this time God's response to their complaining is not so amiable. According to the scripture, God answers their slavery was so much better wine fest by sending poisonous serpents into their midst. Now these serpents bites caused several of them to die of fiery, painful bites. Let's pause a moment and recognize that yes, this creates some questions of theology. What about idols, the judgment of sins, and more? And it's absolutely okay to wrestle with that, and we should. But I also want us to focus on what happens next. The people repent of their sin, and they beg Moses to pray on their behalf. When Moses does so, God says, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. As instructed, Moses makes a serpent of bronze and sets it high on a pole. When the people who have been bitten look up at the serpent, their snake bites are healed and they live. Was it the statue or was it of their repentance that saved them? We have to remember that if looking up at the bronze snake statue reminded the people to lift their hearts to God, then maybe that snake was a sacred reminder. Looking up at them, they looked through it to their only healer. In the context of Lent, there remains all kinds of room for us to think about what are we most afraid of and what does that fear do to us? We have lived with fear a lot lately. So in what sense do these fears become idols that keep us locked in that place of fear? I think sometimes media coverage keeps us in that time of fear. We have so much information that it makes it easy to stay in that place. Or I think about our self-doubts and how they can hold us in place of fear. Many things can do this, but we need to look up and live to have our hearts be open to God's healing in us. When we read the scriptures, we often place ourselves in the story. We wanna to relate to the passage and we wanna gain understanding of God in our story. There is a group though that none of us ever wanna say that we're like. We know that they have a bad rap, the Israelites, we know that they face a lot of challenges, and in their times of complications, they complain. They don't express gratitude to God for getting them through these difficult endurances. However, this year, that has felt like 40, puts us in a similar place. We can relate to the Israelites because even though we have endured so much, we might not be taking the time to show appreciation. Maybe the complaints are small, but when we live in that spirit of complaining, they just start rolling and we begin to think back over all the injustices and the complaints just start rolling off our tongues. So what have been some of your complaints this past year? Lack of access to the healthcare system, not enough time with loved ones, maybe the random items at the store being out of stock mail being delayed, or vacation and trips being non-existent, church not operating in the same way, lack of control, routine, or normalcy, and really the list could go on and on. These are valid complaints, ones that can be soul-crushing. 
I mean, think about our scripture and how the Israelites start complaining about the bread. What if they had responded in a different way? What if they would have shown appreciation for all the Lord had done for them? How can we look at this past year with appreciation? We give thanks for technology, for connecting us to our medical care. We give thanks for learning the value of friends and family. We give thanks for learning to be thankful for the having access to food. We give thanks that we are able to communicate in so many ways. We give thanks for vacation pass and dreaming of the future ones. We give thanks that from March 2020 to March 2021, our food pantry served um, about a little over a thousand households. That is a lot of food given to those in need. We give thanks for parking lot services that brought community, online services, Bible studies, devotions, mail, email, phone calls, and the way our church has still been able to do ministry. We give thanks that we have learned tools to help us when we feel out of control. We give thanks to God who provides us the bread that sustains our life. We give thanks. Fred Rogers said, I believe that appreciation is a holy thing. That when we look for what's best in a person, we happen to be at the moment, we're doing what God does all the time. So in loving and appreciating our neighbors, we're participating in something sacred. Yes, giving thanks and appreciation is a sacred act. We must look up and live. In other words, we must look up and live in God's sacred act of praising. We can cast out our fears by living in the savoring. Instead of focusing on the moans and groans, we will need to cast out those idols and turn to the one who heals. Now I challenge you all for the next 14 days to savor the bread. Share in that sacred act of living in appreciation. Embrace the holy moment and look up and live. In the name of God, the healer and Holy Spirit, amen.
just look up in the hopes of seeing what God has in store for us and let us go out and see the grace and glory of God. In the name of the one who we look up to and his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>